Hi, good day to you. Uh, my name is Nano. Uh, this is my first vlog. Uh, I'm gonna try to tell you all about the uh, Amtrak B924 and how to install it. It's the first time for me too. Uh, let's start with uh, why I was, uh, why I've been considering this AIS. Um, well, at the moment we are on a Beneteau Oceanus. 361. Uh, it has a old system built on the uh, MIA uh, 0183 uh, and it's all working at the moment. Uh, as a plotter I use my iPad uh, and that's why I considered this Amtrak AIS because it's capable of uh, um, delivering the AES sing signal to the iPad and uh, I use uh, at the moment Navionics uh, and Navionics is able to uh, use this signal as an input on the uh, on the chart plot uh, and it will show you all the vessels that are around you uh, and it will show me to them. Uh, so this is the uh, 2 watt version uh, so not the newest 5 watt uh, not really interested in that at the moment. Uh, I don't need the 5 watt signal. Uh, so let's see what's inside the box. So let's unbox uh, the uh, Amtrak B924. Uh, first of all, uh, if you look on the box, you see a couple of symbols. So this is really a transceiver. So we can read and we can write. As in, uh, we can look up ships and they can see me uh, based on my MSI uh, number. Uh, it's the version with the splitter inside and that's something that I really wanted because I want, do not want too much devices uh, here in the control panel. Uh, um, it has the splitter inside so there's, there are cables delivered with it. Uh, to uh, just uh, pass, pass the uh, signal from, uh, in this case, the uh, VHF uh, antenna to the uh, AIS and from the AIS to my Raymarine uh, VHF. Uh, inside the box, We have the device, it's really little and it's also really clean, I like the design. So here we have a external uh, GPS antenna that we can mount on it. It's not needed if you're in a polyester vessel, they say. So, and uh, this is the antenna and the VHF radio pass through. Uh, on the other side, we have the uh, Nemea 2000. I will use that in a couple of years, I think, when I'm ready to upgrade uh, the whole the whole system on the on the boat. And this one is used to power the device and also use it on the uh, 0183 network if you want to. Uh, but I don't have a plotter with it, so I'm not going to use those uh, those pairs. Together with that, we have the VHF cable and we have the uh, uh, voltage cable with the uh, NMEA uh, 0813 uh, connections on it. There's not a uh, NMEA 2000 uh, cable uh, in it. And also, as they call it, they have a special bracket that you can place everywhere uh, and uh, where you can mount uh, the AAS on. It also has a template to drill the holes and a short documentation how to uh, install everything. But there's a, a better in, uh, guide uh, uh, on the website itself. Something that I did see is that at the moment uh, I'm not able to uh, download the iOS uh, application uh, for it. So I send them an email and I'm waiting for their response on uh, which app I, don't need, I do need to use. 
uh, because uh, the app that is mentioned uh, is not popping up in the iOS store. So uh, that's something that I'm waiting for, but I can also program it with my uh, laptop uh, on Windows and on Mac. So uh, we're gonna try that uh, later on. So here we have my uh, control panel. Uh, what I'm planning to do is to place it together with the VHF and uh, Hi-Fi fuse. Um, each connection uh, has its own fuse and this one is, if I'm correct, uh, when what I was looking into the uh, documentation uh, based on 10, um, uh, 10 amperes. Um, so I should be fine because uh, the amount of the three devices is lower than the 10 uh, amperes. Uh, the Raymarine has his own uh, fuse, the radio has his own fuse. Um, so I have to look if I'm also gonna place an extra fuse on the uh, Amtrak. So one of the things that I found out is that uh, there is not a USB cable coming with the set. So you need to have the correct USB-C cable and more important, uh, that something that I found out, it must be a USB-C cable that can do data transfer. Otherwise you will get a pop-up in the application uh, telling you it's uh, not possible to make a COM port connection with the laptop and the AIS. Now we're ready to configure the AIS. Uh, start Pro AIS 2 from the start menu and connect to the AIS. When you are connected to the AIS, you need to fill in the MSI number. This is the most important number that you can only fill in once. Uh, after this, you will apply it uh, and it will be saved to the configuration. And this is the only part that cannot be changed afterwards. If you want to change it, you need to call up uh, the vendor uh, to make sure that they can reset your device. Next to putting in the MSI number, you also need to put in the call sign and the vessel name. Uh, in the left corner below, you see you saw also the picture of uh, your vessel, uh, and you need to put in the measurements of where you placed the IES if you're not using a external IES antenna. In this part, in the diagnostics part, you see how the uh, device is functioning. All is going well. Uh, it hasn't sent any the messages yet, so that's why there are true red crosses. But we can already see that we are uh, receiving uh, AES messages from other vessels. So now that we have sent our first message, everything goes to green and is working as expected. This can take a while. Something we also need to look at is the VSWR number. Mm, it is an indication on how well your antenna is working. What I've heard is that it needs to be around 2. It can be a little bit higher, uh, but if it's too high, it will give some error messages uh, in this application. So the last thing that we need to do is go to the uh, tab with uh, the Wi-Fi settings uh, and make notes of the Wi-Fi network and the password. This is something we need to uh, use for the iPad or the Android device to get on the network and get the data of the AIS. So on my iPad, we go to configuration and we put in the Wi-Fi settings. Uh, you just look up the Wi-Fi network, give the password and uh, you're good to go. So now that we're on the iPad, we can start the uh, Navionix app, go to menu go to paired devices and if it's all working fine you will see the device if you do not see the device connect to the device manually on my iphone it worked right away on the ipad i needed to put it in manual uh, when it's set you can go back to the uh, chart plot and if it's correct 
you will see vessels popping up. Uh, you can uh, hover over the, uh, the vessels uh, and tap on the uh, message pane of that vessel and, and see uh, all the information that is uh, available for that vessel. So I hope this uh, installation uh, has helped you in any way. Uh, it was fairly easy, but you need to really look out for a couple of things, as I mentioned in this uh, tutorial. Uh, well, see you again. Thanks.